Unfortunately, most miniatures have not grasped the physics of standing on their own two feet. Almost all need a base of some sort to keep them from unfortunate gravity-based injuries. Not only do bases keep our miniatures upright, in-game the size of bases are specific because of how base size affects movement and formations. But the base is no mere miniature crutch. It can also bring your entire army together, visually, and help tell the story of your army. I use a story-based approach when painting miniatures. I've talked about that in previous videos. And I believe this story is not only the foundation of my color scheme, but the feel of the miniature in its entirety. Base included. My Stormcast Ninja Rangers have a color scheme that is somewhat inspired by modern warfare. In my mind, I see them more as an urban force, but like the soldiers themselves, a force in a shattered realm, ruins of a past glory or a falling city in disrepair. I decided to go with cobbled but somewhat ruined streets, a relatively simple task of using green stuff and rolling pins then adding some stones and earthy pastes and textures, rather efficiently basing my entire army in one evening. The combination of urban cobbles and dirt that has even splashed up onto the soldier completes and complements the story I'm trying to get across with these miniatures. I used a similar approach to uh, this one-off golden person and crab-clawed acrobat friend, picturing it stalking through the ruins of an abandoned temple, using a Greek-inspired rolling pin, uh, once more on green stuff, and then cutting a wine cork into the shape of fallen pillars and some stones and dirt. To hopefully pass on some inspiration, I, I thought I'd go into how I went about building the base for my gnaw, uh, or squid, squig, and share some of the materials and ideas I have bouncing around in my head. Uh, next to all the bats. This base verges on the edge of a diorama, but I'm hoping, therefore, it can be all the more useful as an example in story basing. I wanted my gnaw to exist on a battlefield. I don't think you bring your gnaw indoors much. Uh, just imagine the size of that litter box. Now, to really enforce the feeling of battlefield, I thought trenches would be a thing. It would also complement the overall feeling of this entire miniature, fearlessly stomping slash breaching enemy lines. I used XPS foam to build up some level. In the past I've been using air drying clay a lot, but mainly to make more sort of organic shapes, which was not needed here. For XPS foam I always try to use white glue, because super glue will melt this plastic foam. To round off the edges and get rid of all the little fibers I seem to be getting in my foam, I carefully and under adult supervision uh, just put a little bit of fire to the whole thing. To get a bit more sci-fi and less sort of previous world wars, I wanted to use some of this hexagon shaped mesh that magically appeared while I was cleaning out my hobby drawer. I used old sprue to build something like concrete pillars for the mesh. Sprue is something that should not be thrown away lightly. It's an excellent building material and it comes free with your minis. Some chipping and stabbing away with a hobby knife or drilling bullet holes and you can make this stuff look pretty much like anything. My general attitude to more advanced builds like this is to just start. And let it sort of build itself. It's really difficult to plan every single thing in advance, but once I've got something physical in my hand, it's just so much easier to go with whatever feels right, usually with one idea leading to the other. I used a texture paste to give some structure to the lifeless XPS foam, also doubling up as hexagon mesh glue. Now talking about one idea leading to the other, I saw this piece of Gnor sprue uh, with these wonderful numbers on it. To me, it really looks like a steel beam, like everything exploded when the greenskins arrived, and this is all that's left of our lovely modern office complex. Uh, please come back later for a wonderful undeveloped land investment opportunity. Kind of a steel beam. Anyway, th then I smeared on an earthly ground texture, trying to shape it as much as possible, trying to create sort of random textures, but also the ring of a small shell explosion, strategically placed right where you can see it. After everything was dry, I actually pinned the mini, just in case it would try and run away in the middle of the night. 
Then adding a bit more texture paste. First and foremost so that the gnaw looks like part of the scenery and not just glued on. Then it was time for a little bit of eye candy. Little details can go a long way, they say. Whom they are, I don't really know, but it is true. Especially if they are detailed details. Bits of minis you don't use or 3D printed stuff. Anything that has similar detail level as the miniature will make the build look like you know, I know what I'm doing. Apart from these details, I, I have some go-to things that I use pretty much on every base. Sprue, cut into smaller rocks or sort of cobble size. Cork, either from fermented adult grape juice bottles uh, or actual cork bark. Cork bark can usually be found in pet stores. I think fish also like building the aromas or something. But the structure of cork bark is uncannily reminiscent of rock and stone both in larger form or smaller pieces. Sheets of cork, usually found in hobby stores, are also great for rocky-type structures. By the way, I'm pretty proud of my Necron gun turned into trench lamp. Anyway, go-to things. I use kitty litter, because I have a cat, for medium size rocks. Sand for smaller size rocks, and finally a combination of superglue, first the superglue, and then baking soda sprinkled on top. It leaves you with something that looks like a very fine grain sand on a miniature scale level. Now there are different types of superglue, some flow out more than others. The thick ones tend to build up the baking soda thing into quite large piles, uh, quote unquote, so a very flowy superglue is quite preferable. For that extra level of details, I wanted some barbed wire going, also something that magically appeared while cleaning. This one specifically is from Army Painter. Kind of tricky to glue it in place, and in the end I made sure to fasten it in place with some more texture paste. And finally, some crackle paint. Crackle paint wherever I think there is a lack in details, where things just look a bit too boring. This base is obviously taking things pretty far. The trench is, for let's say a space marine, actually pretty worthless. Only protecting anything below kneecap level, and you know, all in all, it's not really a very long trench. It does make the Gnor look larger, however, because of optical illusions and stuff. So, as a display piece, it's pretty fun. For something Going onto the tabletop, it might just look a little bit weird, but not much weirder than that lumineth Luke Skywalker fellow. Personally, I don't believe in trying to match the base with whatever it goes on top of, because my army will always have the same story regardless of where I play the game. One thing to have in mind, I guess, is that altering the height of your mini or the width of the base might make it unplayable in competition-like circumstances. Like my mage here, that all of a sudden can see over most scatter terrain, therefore making line of sight spells a bit more efficient. Putting your miniature cannon on a two foot tall base might upset your opponent. The most compelling power I can think of when it comes to giving your base some extra thought and ideas is the sometimes forgotten but also very useful power of unity. For someone like me, that swirls around a bit when it comes to colour schemes of my Stormcast army, the fact that all my bases have a similar storytelling thread of the same cobblestones binds the army together and unifies my forces regardless of what I do to the actual minis. Using a base to help convey and complete the visual story of a miniature does not have to be complicated. If you like a simpler approach, be it a rolling pin or maybe some glue and a quick dip, just give yourself a bit of extra time and consider what colours and textures will help you complete your visual story and bind your army together. <laughs>